Hello, my name is Dan Nigro, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Control Components at Omron Automation and Safety. Today's YouTube video, I would like to walk you through the basic setup of our multifunction timer H5CX-N series. Before we begin the basic setup, I would like to introduce to you the key features of our H5CX-N. First is the easy to read process value. If you have a four digit model, the process value will be 12 millimeters high. If you have a six digit model, it will be 10 millimeters high. Next, easy to program via the front panel. As you'll see throughout the video, you can quickly set up the H5CXN timer via the front panel via four toggle switches. Next is the tri-color display. The tri-color display is programmable and the benefit of the tri-color display is that it allows you to see where you are in the timing sequence from across the room. Other key features of the H5CX-N are the universal input. It will accept an MPN or PMP and this is depending on how you wire the unit. Next are the output types. These are model number specific. We have a contact output, which is a single pull, double throw, rated for 5 amps, or a transistor output, which features an MPN open collector. For those applications where you need key protection, we do offer this in our H5CX-N. Key protection can be programmed by using the switches in the front of the timer or the top of the unit slide setting. Once again, this is dependent upon your application and how you would like to set the key protection modes. Last is waterproof protection. Our H5CX-N is NEMA 4X rated or IP66, which makes it an ideal solution for those applications where you have a, a moist environment or a wet environment as well. Before we begin programming our H5CX-N timer, I'd like to let you know there are 11 parameters which may or may not need to be set before you begin your application. Also, please review the factory default parameters as you may not need to change them for your application. In talking to our tech support team, I have found out that many of our customers make minor modifications to the factory default parameters for their applications. All right, so now we're going to begin programming the H5CX-N timer. And in today's video, we're going to use a simple on delay. So the first step, obviously, you want to make sure the timer is wired up properly. So please check your wires, uh, your incoming wires to the wiring diagram that is featured on the back of the timer. After you have it wired correctly, obviously, we're going to bring up the power. So now we can power the, the timer. What I'd like to call to your attention on the left, left hand side of the timer are two buttons. The first one is called the mode key and the second is called the reset key. The mode key allows us to advance through the various functions of the timer when programming it and the reset key allows us to reset the timer when it reaches its end result in the timing sequence. So right now I'm going to press the mode key, hold it for three seconds and they'll get us into our first f function of the uh, timer. The first function of the timer is setting up the timing sequence. As you can see here, we have it set up for seconds with a decimal. To move the decimal, we can press the number one key. All right, so we moved the decimal two positions. So depending on the application, the H5CX-N can be used in seconds with uh, three positions behind the decimal. We're going to hit the one key again. We've gone into hours as whole numbers. We're going to press the one key again. It's going to give us hours with the decimal. So depending on the application, we're able to use this functionality. We're going to press the one key again. Now we have hours and minutes. 
Press the one key again. Now you have minutes as whole numbers. We're going to press the one key again. Minutes with a decimal position. We're going to press the one key again. Now we have the timing sequence of minutes and seconds. We're going to press the one key again. It gives us the timing sequence in seconds as whole numbers. And we're going to press the one key again. That just brought us back to the factory default of seconds with a decimal. So I'm going to use the factory default for today's video. Next, to get to the next functionality, I'm going to press the MO key. TIMM up will appear. This allows you to set your timing to time up or to time down. So, to choose up or down, we're going to press the MO key. As you can see, factory default is up. Press the MO key, gives us down. So, for today's video, well, let's just keep it at the factory default of up. We're going to press the MO key again to take us into the next function. The output. Output M is the next function, and this is where we are going to decide if we are going to use an on delay, an off delay, a repeat cycle, signal on, signal off, power on, power off. There are 11 different timing functions you could choose from with the H5CX-N. So for today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the factory default, which is A, and this is the on delay. Please take note when programming your output, please have the H5CX-N data sheet available as this will help you understand the output mode you need to choose for your application. So now I'm going to press the MO key. We're going to have the next function OTIM and this has to do with the functionality of the contact transfer and the factory default is hold. So what happens is when the contacts transfer after timing sequence, they will then hold. So I'm going to use the factory default. IFLT, this functionality will let you determine what input signal you need to use. Since we are going to be using a basic switch, we could keep it at 20 milliseconds, but if we have an input that's very high speed switching, we could change it to one milliseconds. If you are using a photoelectric or a proximity sensor, you can actually keep it at 20 milliseconds. As I mentioned before, a lot of our customers when using the H5CX-N timer, they use the factory default for a lot of their parameters. So now we are going to press the mode key. We are going to see the IMOD. This allows us to choose the input type into the timer. That being MPN or PMP. Factory default is MPN, and if you're using a limit switch or snap action switch, such as I'm going to use, you can keep it at MPN. What this allows the timer to do is that it, it prohibits any contact bounce. So now I'm going to press the mode key. You're going to see C-O-L-R. Now this is going to allow you to choose colors within the H5CX-N 
Uh, there's three colors, but nine different combinations you could choose from. Uh, the three colors are red, green, and orange. And for today, I'm just going to keep it at the default. As you can see here is red and green. So I'm going to press the mode key one more time. SL-H, this allows you to set the high limit. Uh, reason being is that you may have a specific value, a timing value you want to program and keep it at. And by setting that specific value here, this will prohibit the timing sequence from moving on. Last but not least is the KYPT. This is your key protect. There are seven different levels of key protect. As I mentioned before, when you're choosing your timing sequence to have the data sheet available, I recommend that you have the data sheet available when you are choosing your key protect because the temp, depending on which level you are choosing, you are going to be locking out certain functionalities of the H5CX-N timer. So I'm going to keep it at the factory default of KP-1 because this allows us to have access to everything. So that being the case, now I'm going to get back to our regular uh, main menu and I'm going to press and hold the mode key for three seconds. So now we are back at the main menu. So now we set the H5CX-N up for an on delay. Now what we have to do is put in our set value. And by doing that, we could use the keys one through four. So remember, we have it in the seconds with the decimal. So I'm going to press the first position and put in number one. The second position, I'll leave it at zero. And the third position, I'm going to put at 20. As you notice, I've been hitting the bottom of the key. If you hit the top of the key, that'll allow you to advance in your numbering. If you hit the bottom of the key, that allows you to go backwards. So you don't have to cycle through the whole number. So that being the case, we have it set for 20.1 seconds. And I am going to press our basic switch, our snap action switch, and begin the timing process. As you can see, when we hit the 20.1 mark in the timing sequence, our output came on. So now the load would turn on, hence on delay. Thank you for viewing the basic setup of the H5CX-N. Any questions, feel free to contact us at omron247.com or contact your local Omron distributor and or local Omron salesperson. Thank you and have a nice day.